Hi everyone. Today we'll talk about something what is called as back of the envelope calculations. You would have heard this term quite often. So whenever you are doing a task, you would often hear this question. So what's your back of the envelope calculations in terms of when this will get accomplished? So fundamentally, a back of the envelope calculation is all about estimation. It's about estimating that the task that you are doing, how much time it's going to take. And it's not just about task. It could be about anything in world that you have not encountered or or that is unknown. So you might uh, you might want to do a rough order of estimate about that particular thing. What we will do is that in this one, we will more focus on estimation techniques around doing tasks. But the same thing goes, the, the basic elements, the basic philosophy remains the same and it can be applied in different parts of life. So when we estimate about task, how do we do that one? Or why, why we need that whole estimation? So you know that whenever we do a task, be it in personal or in professional life, we don't do, the task doesn't exist in isolation. There are tasks on which this task is dependent on and there are tasks which will depend on this particular task. So it becomes very important that as we are working in the ecosystem, this, this task has to exist in that ecosystem. So for example, like if you get a task of, let's say, manufacturing a product, you have to design and manufacture it. So the moment you can, you will design it, you will manufacture it, but it doesn't happen that the moment that product will come out of the assembly line, it will start selling. No, it doesn't work that way. So for it to sell, a lot of marketing and sales need to go. But for that, the marketing and sales teams need to know that when this product is going to be ready, going to be manufactured, when they will have the pieces in their hand because then the marketing can actually time their marketing efforts around those launch periods and things like that. The same thing goes with the sales efforts because before the product can reach to the retail stores, the whole supply chain needs to be built up. There has to be channels and all those things that need to come in place so that the product can actually get into the retail store, gets in front of the end consumers so that they get an opportunity to buy it. So you see like, Though it's like this task doesn't is not existing in isolation. It has to play with everyone else. And, and that's why the estimation is very important. For example, in this case, like roughly when the product is going to be manufactured and be available, because that would help like the sales and marketing team, then they would know that like what all resources they would need. So they coordinate them, they make them available uh, at right time, uh, at right place. So all those exercises need to happen simultaneously. In itself also, the estimation is important for the task because then for that particular task also, you would get an idea that, okay, how much manpower you are going to need to accomplish that, how much money is needed, what kind of raw material is needed, and what kind of time frame we are talking about. There is another angle to that one. So generally, when you're talking about an outcome, there will be mul multiple tasks that would get involved to achieve that outcome. Some of them are in the critical path, some of them are not. So if their task is in the critical path, that it would mean that more closure monitoring because any shift there would shift the whole timeline. But if it is not in the critical path, then you can use the resources to level the things all across the spectrum. So that's where the estimations becomes really important uh, in, in terms of utilizing the resources and even making them available at right point, uh, right point in the future whenever you are achieving certain milestones as part of accomplishing that task. So what are the different techniques of uh, estimating? One is past experience. We all know that one. I think this is the most common thing that if I have done a certain thing in the past and it were taken this much amount of time or this much amount of resources, in all probability it is going to take the same amount of time or resources. But be careful about one thing, because when you had done in the past, was the environment the same? Because the task also doesn't happen in isolation. There is a context, there is an environment around it. So has the environment, is the environment still same? If yes, then of course, like you can map the older 
execution numbers as an estimation numbers with the current task but if not then you might want to factor in you might have to factor in that how it would change it might impact negatively it might impact positively but it's good to know that how it is going to impact literature is uh, is basically the past experiences of others here the thing they want to be careful about that you are usually not privy to their environmental context when they would have done this task in the past so that is one thing you really want to understand and see that are you comparing ap apple to apples or are you comparing apples to oranges the third one is to mentally walk the path a way to do that is that assume this is the outcome that you are going to achieve then come backwards what all the steps what all the things are needed to execute and reach to that outcome somewhere you reach to a point which is your current status this is also known as some sort of gap analysis so now you know that where you are right now and where you have to achieve and then you just know that what are the smaller and different steps that you need to take towards that but uh, to achieve that particular outcome this is another advantage also it's like doing a due diligence about your whole execution uh the whole execution plan that you are putting in place it also helps in detailing out things to a deeper level and gives a better confidence in terms of okay you are probably taking a right path in terms of achieving that outcome this also helps you in estimating your resources manpower raw material or whatever to a much more uh, they get more refined basically because then also for this particular task also you need to coordinate Uh, maybe sometimes with multiple parties to make sure that the resources are available at the right time uh, as and when the uh, the execution starts happening things to take care of at the end of the day an estimation is an estimation there's a saying in army that the moment you fire the first bullet the hope all the plans go out of window so what it means is that estimate do your predictions but don't hold your life to that one be ready for change it doesn't means that you keep predicting you keep estimating you don't you get, get into an analysis paralysis mode no but it also means that whenever there is a new information when it emerges you are ready to change do your best do your due diligence in terms of estimating in terms of predicting but there is a point in time where you want to take the leap it's sometimes better to go execute and adjust than rather keep on refining your prediction and your estimating model and keep going round and round on that one the key at the end of the day is execution the key at the end of the day is to stand up and start executing so but at the same time be ready if the new information emerges you are ready to accommodate them you are ready to factor that in this is also an important uh, thing for the management to understand that to build a culture where you know that th there is a reasonable uh, I, i would rather put it in that way that be reasonable about accommodating changes which has emerged and which you know that many times are not easy to factor in when estimations are put in place it it sort of also gives a confidence to the execution engine to surface up that information otherwise sometimes these things get noticed very late in the game and then there is very little chance to fix things